don't let people stop your forward momentum. You know, really, you do have to take every thought captive. I said on my Instagram the other day, you know, faith is an Olympic sport. Faith is a full-time job, okay? Faith is a full-time job. Welcome, welcome. I just wanted to talk about a very important subject that I have been overcoming. I know many of you might be dealing with this as well. So it's really important that you stop overcomplicating things or learn to overcome making things difficult because the truth is success is really simple, right? Um, success is also very seamless and that's what I've been learning the further I go in my journey. I just really wanted to get to the root of why we make things overcomplicated because sometimes it's easy to miss. One lesson that's really stuck with me, it actually happened in high school, but I always think about this when I'm like, Courtney, are you making things difficult? You need to stop this, is when I applied for a job at Outback Steakhouse. I worked at like <laughs> every restaurant you could imagine because your girl likes to eat. I got put on this job by a friend of mine um, that I was friends with in high school. She was like, oh, I just got this great job at Outback, girl, you're gonna love it. I'm just a hostess. All I do basically is just sit there and look cute and we get tips. So I was like, I bet, oh, this should be a piece of cake. So I go down to Outback, I'm all, you know, strutting in like, yes, this job is for me, talk to the manager. He's like, oh, sweet, okay, such and such referred you, no problem. Now, before we can hire you, I know you've been referred, but there is a simple math test that you're gonna have to complete. Your girl brought a TI-89 calculator graphing paper and a pencil to an interview <laughs> at Outback Steakhouse. But I was like, I'm, you know, I'm the best. I am gonna get this job. If my friend could get this job, surely, surely I could get this. He's like trying to assure me like none of this stuff is like complicated. You don't have to do any hard equations. I don't know why you got that big brick of a calculator. So I'm sitting down at the table. I'm, you know, going over the test. I'm thinking about the answers. I'm looking at it, but then I'm thinking like, well, I know the question is asking me this. Okay. How much change would I make or what would be a 20% tip on a $40 meal? But I don't know like what I was trying to do, maybe impress myself. I'm like, well, let me enter in this calculation. I bet you I can get the answer faster if I use my TI-89 calculator. Let me graph this or let me do longhand division so I finish the test I turn it in the guy's like great you know you could get started as soon as next week once this gets um, going so you know I'm gonna process this or whatever I'll give you a call um, early next week and then we'll get started on you know getting you all set up at Outback Steakhouse and I'm like yes Monday comes don't hear anything no problem Tuesday comes don't hear anything I'm sure they're just really busy Thursday come, I don't hear nothing. So I'm like, well, let me be professional and give them a full business week. Friday, I'm like, okay. So I call and I'm like, yo, manager, what's up? Like, you know, did you forget? I thought I was gonna be able to start this week. First, he's like, who is this? I'm like, oh, it's Courtney, the, you know, math extraordinaire. Um, unfortunately, we processed your test and um, you failed it. You got the answers wrong. So we're not gonna be able to offer you the job at Outback Steakhouse. And when I tell you guys, the shame, the shame I felt. How on earth do you fail a test to get a job at Outback Steakhouse? And I was so upset because I'm like, my friends and all these people working here, and I know they're not as good at math as me. And I know many of you might be feeling the same way in terms of you're watching other people succeed online and you're watching people, wow, they're having 100K months or hitting their first million dollar year or selling out their programs or all this stuff. And you're like, I'm talented too, low key. I think I'm actually more talented than that person. What in the world is going on? So it took this long for me to come to this realization. You tend to overcomplicate in areas that you're trying to overcompensate. My friend, she was, you know, a cheerleader at school, very popular, you know, all the guys liked her. I was this kind of like gangly, you know, lanky, <laughs> taller than everybody, growing into myself, trying to figure out my natural hair or whatever. And so for me, even though I thought that I was applying for this job, I was really applying to validate my own worthiness. For many of us, we have to be honest with ourselves and say, what emotional junk 
are we bringing to the goals that we say that we want to accomplish that is ultimately getting in the way of whatever it is that we want to achieve. And again, I can laugh at it now, but at the time it was very painful. The truth is you can never rise higher than your lowest limiting belief. And so if you want to stop making things difficult, it's really important that you attack those limiting beliefs and that you release yourself from whatever that emotional junk is that's going on that's keeping you from doing the things, right? To, to overcome your limiting self-belief, you need to focus only on your favorable future. A lot of times we believe that we don't have permission to believe in the outcome that we want unless we have proof. It's really important that you not focus on well, what if they say no or um, what if I don't hit my sales goals or whatever. Focusing on that is actually in part what helps create it because you're telling your brain this is what's important to me. Unsuccessful people will only focus on what they have evidence for or what they have evidence of, but successful people focus on what they have expectation of. So it's really important that you focus on the expectation that you ultimately want, because really this could be a life and death type thing. Carl Walenda, he was like a circus act and um, a high wire trapeze type artist in the 1970s. He was doing this for years, no problem whatsoever, until one day, he fell to his death, fell to his death. Completely unexpected, nothing was wrong, everything was as it always was, what was the problem? And so obviously this caused a big news stir at the time, and so they were talking to his wife, and the only thing that she could say, because they're like, what, what happened, did, did the wire break? Was you know his shoes worn out, like what was the issue? And she was like, you know, I don't know, but the only thing I can say is the morning before he went up, that was the first day that he ever considered falling. She said before, he n it never even occurred to his mind that it was possible that he could fall. I mean, obviously, intellectually, he knew that, like, oh, you know, you can fall, but he never considered that. That was never his focus. His focus was always just, okay, how do I get from one side of the high wire to the other? The brain goes where your focus is. So it's so important that you only focus on outcomes that you ultimately want and not focus on outcomes that you don't want you've been focusing on the failure and your brain is an amazing computer it's an amazing machine you give it information and it'll do exactly what you tell it to do focus on the feeling right so if we're not going to be focused on the failure we're going to be focused on the outcomes that we do want it's really important that you focus on the feeling like getting in in the in the zone, right? You hear athletes talking about the zone. You wanna have a feeling, you wanna create an environment, right? You need to discipline yourself to reject any thoughts or reject any suggestions, even from other people, that dampen your enthusiasm, right? And I'll give you a real-time example of this. So my husband and I, we have been looking for a new house and I'm really excited, things are moving. And I've been looking for this for um, probably 18 months and we found exactly what I was looking for, right? We were one of the first people to look at the house. We were getting ready to put in our offer. It's like late at night, um, you know, emailing back with the realtor and called my dad, you know, bless his heart, love my dad. But I'm like, dad, look at this house. Like, I hope we get it, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, Courtney, you know, this market is insane. I don't know, now my dad doesn't live in Houston, he lives in Chicago, but he's like, you know, I don't know where y'all are at, but houses are going for, you know, 20% over asking, 30% over asking, you just better make sure that your offer is tight, like, you know, all of this. At that time, I had never considered that, you know, we weren't gonna get this house or that our offer wasn't gonna be accepted, but suddenly I'm like nail biting and I'm like, oh my goodness, he's right. The market is insane. In the final moments, literally, like my husband is getting ready to send the email and I'm going back and forth like, ah, is it the right price? Should we change our offer? You know, my husband's like rolling his eyes. He's like, what the heck happened? Like we went over this, we looked at the comps, you know, price per square foot, like we were good, what happened? <sighs> but, you know, I was so nervous about it that he was like, okay, we'll up our offer by 10K. So, Needless to say, <laughs> our offer was accepted, but it's become clear now as we're going through this process that we probably could have got away um, with the original offer that we had, that it wasn't necessary for us to up it. But 
that was my bad. That was my failure because I let a belief come in and damper my enthusiasm at the last minute. Don't let people stop your forward momentum. You know, really, you do have to take every thought captive. I said on my Instagram the other day, you know, faith is an Olympic sport. Faith is a full time job. OK, faith is a full time job. You have to stay on it consistently and you constantly have to be monitoring what you're thinking because what you're thinking produces the behaviors that you actually do and the behaviors that you actually do produce the outcomes that you get. So it's really important that you stay in the zone, stay energized and stay enthusiastic. The last thing that you need to do is you need to forget your failures. Yes, forget your failures. So I've been reading a lot about brain science. This is actually really fascinating. But did you know that your brain literally was not designed for difficulty? Like it was built for ease. You have a built in easy button in your brain. And that built in easy button is how the brain naturally learns things. And how the brain naturally learns things is when you're doing things by trial and error, when you hit on the correct thing that produces the results you want, guess what? Your brain immediately go, it goes, it actively goes to work to start forgetting all of the other behaviors that don't produce the result that you're looking for. The only time your brain looks at a past failure is to determine the distance between the deviation and your destination, right? And once it determines the distance, it shortens that distance. And once it shortens that distance, you're off to the races. So don't dredge up things that your brain is working overtime to try to forget. Now, part of why this is difficult, just being honest, is how we're taught to learn in school. So you may not know this, but in ancient times, like, you know, biblical days or whatever, there was a uh, schooling and education, but not like how it is now. Most people did apprenticeships and apprenticeship is essentially when you are working under a mentor instead of um, you know, reading in a book and saying like, oh, what's the right answer? And then trying to remember the right answer to do the thing. You watch someone who knows what they're doing, do it, and you start to model their behavior. Because the funny thing is, once you get really good and really successful at something, again, it's difficult for you to remember like, the wrong way that you used to do it. Like ask anybody who can draw or who's an excellent painter or who is a carpenter or something like that. They can't like tell you the wrong way. They can only show you the right way or watch you try to do it. And then when they see you doing it the wrong way, they're like, no, 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 do it like this. And so I believe that modeling is really one of the best ways to learn something or to achieve whatever it is that you're trying to achieve because your the wrong way of doing things or the behavior that doesn't produce the result that you want becomes self-evident when you watch somebody who has mastered it. I have three more spots left from now in August into my revenue on repeat coaching program. If you're a coach, consultant, industry expert, I'm really excited to announce that not only do I have spots open, but I'm offering a grant for people who are coming in and I've teamed up with a third party funder. You'll need to apply to see if you qualify, but a third party funder who can fund the entire program for you and then you just pay the third party funder, you know, small monthly payments as you work through the program. And I mean, if you get the results that the people who are in the program getting, I mean, you might be able to pay that off before you even make your first payment in a month, right? So, you know, I, I mentioned I had a life coach who did 18K, I think in four, maybe five weeks. Um, another consultant who just landed her first 12K client and she's been killing it. Um, another client who quit her job because she's already made 80K and she's got another 15K client pending. The vast majority, I think it's up one person, has already surpassed 5K. So if this is something of interesting to you and you're like, ooh, I've been looking to work with you, but girl, I'm saving my pennies, apply at CourtneyLSanders.com slash apply. That's easy. I hope this helps you overcome overcomplication so you can be a recovering heart of hot like me. I hope your day and wherever you're watching in the world is as amazing as this, and I'll see you next time. Bye.